I wish someone had explained this to me earlier. Okay, this next one, I wish that I knew when I was younger. This one, I had to learn the hard way. I'm not sure how long the sun is going to bless us with this natural lighting. It's only 2.30 and it's already setting. Winter is hard. Anyway, as you can tell by the title, we are going to be talking about credit scores, something that I never imagined I would be as excited to talk about on my channel as I am. Like, who knew? But here we are, because as many of you know, I am starting the process of hopefully, fingers crossed, buying a house this year. There is so much that goes into this, a lot of steps, and something that plays a big part in getting approved for a mortgage is your credit score. I am 25 years old and fully self em Hey, Luna. Luna. Oh my gosh. There's a lot that can definitely feel out of your control when starting the process of purchasing a home, but something that I know is within my control is my credit score. And personally, I need that to be as high as possible before I apply for a mortgage to hopefully get approved for the mortgage that I ideally would like to have. And the reason I'm a bit more concerned about my credit score than usual is because last year I paid off all of my student loans and personal debt in general off in full. And before this, my credit score was honestly really great because I was paying all my loans on time and I was good at managing my credit debt. However, because I just paid off all of my debt at once, my average age of credit dipped a ton after all those closed accounts were closed. But because of this, and because I know it is a small step in this journey of purchasing a home that is still within my control and I still have time to improve on it, I have really been focusing on how to improve my credit score fast in my 20s, as well as give some advice because to be honest, I had a very high credit score for someone at my age. When you check your score, it shows you the average of your credit score for the people in your age category. And mine has always been really, really high. So I just wanted to share some of my personal experience, tips, advice with you on how to achieve a high credit score in your 20s. Honestly, at any time in your life, I'm just in my 20s, so that's my range of expertise here. However, of course, I am no expert. I'm not a professional at this. This is just my own advice. Take that with a grain of salt and please understand that it may not work the same for everyone, but this is what I learned. I have a huge list written out on my phone, so if I'm ever looking down here, that is why. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Comment down below. Don't forget to subscribe. I always shout out the first comment on my social media, so be sure to be following me on Instagram as well and be sure to have the bell turned on so you don't miss an upload. I do a ton of money related content. I'm going to link that playlist down below if you are curious. I have videos on my 14 streams of revenue, investing. I also have a link to get you a free stock for signing up with Robinhood. Definitely use that link. You and I will both get a free stock from that. It's like free money for signing up. It's amazing. So highly recommend. I've got my list. Here we go. So some of these are going to seem simple and you may already know them, but I promise that there are some that even I didn't even know until I started researching this topic for this video a few weeks ago that have drastically improved my own score and some things that I have learned make such a big difference or impact on your credit score like affecting 30% of what your score is made up of kind of difference so it's a big deal. I tried to organize it from like simple tips to like most complicated biggest difference at the end so let's get started. My first tip may seem obvious but that is don't miss a payment. If you miss a payment this can have a huge impact on your score but making payments on time show that you are responsible with money, you're prompt, and you can be held accountable. No matter what, always pay your loans on time, whether that is student, credit, personal, car loan, whatever it is, just stay on track of it. I usually create an alarm or an event on my phone every single month to notify me the day before that I need to pay a certain bill so I don't forget. You can also set up automatic payments, but missing a payment can just have terrible effects on your score. Like you don't want to do it. Luckily, I've never missed a payment in my life, but it's definitely a big fear and it can have drastic consequences as well on your credit score. Going off of the first tip, try to always pay more than what you owe. That may just be an additional $10 or $50 towards your bill, but it will make a big difference if you pay more than what you owe or completely pay it off in full. This helps your score and then it helps you pay less interest and more of the principal balance as well. Going off of this, try to pay your credit cards in full every single month. Now I know there are definitely loans like a car payment or a house or just bigger personal loans that you can't pay in full that may take five, 10, 30 years to pay off, but for the credit card debt, spend a little each month, pay it off in full. This helps prevent interest and can also increase your credit limit because that's very helpful for your credit score. Beyond just paying your credit card in full every single month, try to pay your credit card twice in every month at the beginning and at the end. The reason that this makes a difference is because it can keep your balance low at the time that they run a new credit score check each month because depending on when they check to see the balance of your credit card debt, your payment may have not gone through yet. So it's always best to try to pay it whatever the total is at the beginning of the month and at the end. I personally do this with my credit cards. 
it's been really really helpful it also helps me kind of spend less as well which is always a good thing my next tip is to always use your credit cards a little bit each month now be careful not to dig yourself into debt but if it's something that you can pay off in full at the end of every month use your card to help build credit and show that you can pay it off quickly this really just helps you build credit it shows that you're using it but you don't need all of it and that you can pay it off in full which means that you're financially responsible and prompt and you're not broke I guess just doing this over time as well as every single month helps your credit score build and just shows that you are a great lender and that you can handle the loans that they give you this one I had to learn the hard way this year but they say to pay off your loans as soon as possible so that you don't owe a lot in interest or so that you don't have a lot of debt when you try to apply for a mortgage however no one told me that if you pay off your student loans years or even decades earlier than they expect you to pay it off that this will actually hurt your credit score a lot and here's why so over the summer I paid off $25,000 of student loans all at once in full one payment it was such a wonderful feeling I felt so free I had financial freedom for the first time in my adult life and it was a really big moment for me but unfortunately my credit score went from the mid 700s where it was at back down to around 680 for a bit it was frustrating because I was great with paying off my loans but by paying off all my debt it actually hurt my score it didn't make sense to me like I did what they wanted me to do and now I look like I'm not as responsible as before over time a few months later however my score definitely kept improving because I was doing the tips previously mentioned just continuing to use my credit cards and paying them off every single month but this was when I started to intentionally increase my score because now I was debt free I have plans of buying a house this year and applying for a mortgage and I really need that score to be as high as possible so this is when I started to really get the ball moving and figure out why my credit score went down after paying off my debt and it might sound very simple but to someone at 24 or 25 at the time no one ever taught me that like in school or like adults I don't know now the reason that my score went down after I paid off all of my debt is because every time you close an account with a lender it wipes that age of credit off of your account I had dozens of loans out since 2014 that had just been wiped off my account so my average age of credit went from seven years to only one year <laughs> And that really hurts to say because I only started taking out credit cards in 2019. No one ever told me to do it before. I know that's not an excuse, but this is why I really want to like share this with you and tell you all these tips to learn from my mistakes and to hopefully help somebody out there. <laughs> Growing up, I was just always told don't have a credit card, you know, don't get yourself into debt. So for a long time, I had this bad stigma about credit cards and I didn't have any. This was a really big mistake because now when I paid off all my debt, I didn't have a lot on my credit report and my average age of loans or credit now was just these new credit cards that I took out when I was 23 and 24 and here I'm at 25 trying to have a great credit score and my age has been cleared. There are ways to help this. There are really quick fixes that we will get into later, which is actually the route that I'm taking before I apply for a mortgage but that's going to come at the more complicated tip that you can do to improve your score in a little bit luckily this is just a temporary setback and with time and continued credit use it will rise up again at the end of the day it's great to pay off your debt this is not a mistake but just expect it to have various results in your score afterwards there are definitely ways to fix the fact that my average age of credit went down so much after paying off my loans and we will get into that besides the obvious of just continuing to use your card over a long period of time to build up that age another way to fix this is to become an authorized user I wish someone had explained this to me earlier or even to my parents like years ago because becoming an authorized user on someone else's account is a really quick way to improve your score by like a lot not every place will do this but becoming an authorized user means that somebody adds your name to their credit card this provides you with your own card under their account but they are responsible for the bills and it is their credit score that impacts the card and the credit limits and all of that so it's not your responsibility you are just underneath them on their card this is really common for parents to do with their kids or teenagers to help them build their own credit before they are old enough to really apply for a credit card themselves or need to like be approved for rent or a mortgage or something it can just really help help people that are just getting started but I've also seen this in married couples when one of them has a really low score and they might be trying to buy their first home together or something so then their partner may add them to their card it almost seems too good to be true right so how this works is when you are added to somebody else's card and you become an authorized user underneath their credit card that credit cards history as well as credit limit is now reflected upon your credit score which helps increase your score because it gives you more credit history and a higher limit 
So definitely only consider this if the person you want to be an authorized user under has a high score and is responsible with their debt, never misses a payment, and doesn't spend a lot, just a little bit on their credit card because high utilization of the card is really bad as well. Only consider this with somebody who has a high stable credit score. If they have trouble paying their payments on time, missing payments, or charging a lot on their credit score every single month, this could actually bring down your credit score because now you're associated with their habits as well. In a way, you're both responsible responsible for each other. But if they have a strong history of great credit, this can definitely give you a bump. Not every credit card offers this, so it's definitely something to look into. Since my age of credit was the one thing damaging my score, this made a huge difference for me. And it was something completely within my control that I was able to quickly fix before applying for a mortgage down the road. And it definitely can help skyrocket your score. So it's really something to look into. I guarantee it. So speaking of credit cards, this one is crucial. There's this thing called revolving utilization, which stands for what percent of your credit line you've spent or are spending. I kind of mentioned this earlier about how you want it to be as low as possible and that is because your utilization actually makes up 30% of your overall score. That's a lot. Basically, it's what percentage of your total credit limit you are spending or owe as a balance every single month. You want this number to be as low as possible to show that you are good with money and that you don't need a lot of it every single month to spend and then owe back. So your credit utilization is the total amount of money that all of your credit cards combined have given you to spend. You want to keep your credit utilization at least under 10% of your total balance. To keep the math really simple, if your credit limit is $100, you want to make sure that your balance on the bill of the amount that you're spending each month is $10 or less, which is why it's also helpful to pay twice a month to keep this balance low. So my tip here is to increase your credit limit if you can, because by increasing your credit limit and or opening more credit cards, but not changing your spending habits, just having more money at hand just in case, brings your credit utilization higher than before, but also keeps your percentage lower because now 10% of your new balance is going to be a bigger total of your spending than it was before. Does that make sense? So if you increased your credit limit from 100 to 200, but you're still just spending $10, now your percent utilization is even better. And that right there makes up 30% of your credit score, which is insane. That's a lot that you are in control of, to help or to hurt your score, depending on your spending habits, honestly. So even if you don't use all of your credit cards, instead of canceling them, keep them open because it keeps your credit limit higher, which can help keep your utilization even lower. You can always check this on any site that you use to check your your score. That's how I do it. There are so many different sites and platforms that allow you to see this. It's been really helpful. Also, if you are an authorized user, definitely make sure that the person you are an authorized user under keeps their utilization low as well, because that will affect your score now since you are underneath that card. Also, having a mix of various credit types improves your score as well, because it shows that you're good at handling various types of debt as well as credit. Meaning, if you have various loans out, such as student credit, personal car loans, etc., that variety can also improve your score, because it shows that you have a wide range of approval, responsibility, and various loans out there. Since I just paid off all of my loans, including student debt, personal debt, car loans, and medical debt, the only thing that still shows up in my credit score and the only thing that I'm really using now every single month are my credit cards. And I'm really just using them every single month and then paying them off in full every single month as well. But I don't have a lot of variety anymore. What's nice is every single card I have is different and has a variety in itself from different institutions and limits or reward systems. But having variety is really nice and can also improve your score. Now, even though I just told you to open more credit card accounts, watch out for hard inquiries. Is it inquiries or inquiries? Hmm, let me know how you pronounce it. I might be saying it wrong. It could be because I'm from the Midwest, who knows? So a hard inquiry is basically when a lender will look at your score to see if they approve you for the loan or for the credit card. And them looking at your score and your history, this affects your score. And you don't want too many hard inquiries on your account because it kind of looks bad. It looks like you're in a need for money, that you're applying for loans everywhere. And you just wanna have a couple. I think under five is what they kind of say is like in the green zone. I only have two right now, which is great but you definitely wanna keep that on the lower side. This doesn't stay on your score forever. I think it will disappear after like six months or so. Definitely do not do anything that would require a hard inquiry on your account if you don't have to. However, a soft inquiry will not affect your score. This is when you check your own score. It's when you go onto any site that you use to look at your credit score and that does nothing. It's just when a lender needs your permission to look at your score. It's a hard inquiry when you're applying for something. That's where you wanna watch out. So if it's not 
necessary, I wouldn't do it. And don't apply for like a million cards at once. Try to span that out as well. Okay, this next one, I wish that I knew when I was younger. I wish that instead of my parents telling me never get a credit card because they got into so much debt at a young age and they were just trying to prevent me from doing the same. But by doing this, they prevented me from working on achieving a higher score at a younger age because I don't have a lot of credit history. And your length of credit affects 15% of your overall score, which again is kind of a lot. So the longer that you have credit history, the better your score will be because it shows that you are trustworthy. You can pay off your statements and you use your card well. This one is hard for anyone in their young 20s like myself because we are all just really getting started on our adult journey. So most likely all of our ages of credit is going to be a little weak. The longer that you're using your credit cards and working on paying off loans, the better this portion will become on your score. And even if you choose not to use a card anymore, like I said earlier, instead of canceling it, just stop using it, pay it off, but keep the card active and keep that credit line there because this helps so much with maintaining your length of credit history and the amount on your credit limit, which we've talked about earlier. But I wish my parents had told me to get a credit card as soon as possible, but with a small limit. Honestly, just something to start building credit. What's nice is I did have to take out student loans as soon as I was 18, freshman in college, and start paying those off. So because of my student loan debt, I did have credit history dating back to when I was 18 to now. So so that has helped. But now that I've paid them off, that no longer reflects my active score and my age of credit history has been reducted down a lot. <laughs> it would have been so much better even if I was a teenager. So if I opened a credit card at 18 and was just super careful with it, that would have helped. Or even being an authorized user as a teenager underneath my parents' card, that would have helped a ton as well. Just building that credit history while I still had so much time ahead of me. Since talking to my parents about this and being added to my dad's account, we actually discussed the same for my teenage siblings who will now be given those extra years of credit responsibility to help improve and build their scores so that by the time that they're in their 20s like me, they'll have credit history already built up and hopefully an easier time being approved for cars and houses. Sometimes it sucks being the oldest, it really does, but you gotta pave the way. <laughs> Those are all the tips that I have written down and the sun is clearly setting onto my face. So that's all that I have in this video. If I've left out any tips that you have that helped improve your credit score, please comment them down below. I'm always learning. And again, I am no professional. So some of these may be iffy or wrong. Just take it with a grain of salt, but that is what worked for me. Biggest takeaways though, of course, is just to maintain responsibility, pay off as much as you can every single month. Over time, it will just get easier. But age of credit was definitely the thing that hurt my score the most. So. I hope that this helped. I hope you enjoyed and don't forget your free stock at Robinhood because investing is another great way to improve your financial freedom and get you to that financial goal that you want to be at. Don't forget to check out my other videos on finances. Link down below. I'll see you guys next week with my new video. Bye. I was so hurt and upset that I never gave him another chance.